care is such an important topic right now during our Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We have four million women who are living with breast cancer. So we have a woman from our area, a radiologist who's also written all kinds of books, and she is telling their stories. As a radiation therapist, I've heard many women say to me, my provider, my doctor said I was too young for breast cancer or too young for cancer. And, you know, I automatically think to my head, in my head, hmm, that's weird. Because if little beautiful babies and little beautiful children can be diagnosed with cancer, then you're not too young to be diagnosed with cancer, unfortunately. Dr. Nia Bailey and Janique Rivera are joining us right now this morning. Thank you for coming and sharing the story. And I think what's so important, because you work with women every day that are dealing with this, living through this, what have you, like, when you go through that, what goes through your mind? That something has to give. That women, you know, from the ages of 24 to 29 to 34 are all being diagnosed with breast cancer. And I think sometimes when they go to their practitioners, they say, Oh, you're too young. You shouldn't be here. But that's not the case at all. So we kind of want to teach back to the doctors and say, hey, we're young. We're being diagnosed with breast cancer and we need diagnostic mammograms so that we can save our lives. What is your story, Janique? What happened with you and what's your journey been like? Um, just a quick little synopsis of it. Um, I was diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer January of 2018. Um, by August, I had a mastectomy, full mastectomy on the right. I was good in the clear, had radiation, did chemotherapy. Um, Valentine's Day of 2020, I was re-diagnosed. Uh, the breast cancer came back in my lung. By September, after chemo again, I had my two-thirds of my lung and a rib removed. I was in the clear again. Um, a couple months after that, in December, it popped back up in my brain. So I was re-diagnosed again. Um, because of the re-diagnosis, it's stage at stage four, um, metastatic triple negative breast cancer. Um, did more treatment, did my brain surgery. I opted to do immunotherapy after that. So since I've been doing immunotherapy, which will be ongoing, um, I've been good in, in the clear. Um, the you're a mom of three kids. I am. What, what, what's that like when you're like, I, I got these kids, these beautiful babies. George, can you just slide this camera over because, and just move this thing out of your way so you can get a better shot of her face because I just want everyone to be able to see who you are as you're talking <laughs> and telling your story. Two more feet. Tell me about your kids. I mean, tell me what you think and you're going treating and you're like, what? My breast, my lung, my brain. Mm -hmm. like, you want to be here for them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Initially, I kind of laughed when I got the diagnosis because I'm thinking, you know, not me. Um, I'm fine. I'm in great health. I feel fine. And I never had any side effects. So when I was seen by two different doctors, they both told me that I was fine. They didn't do any checks and they told me to go on because it's probably a cyst. That was about a year and then it grew. Um, and I had to be adamant about it. My kids in between, I mean, it was just... It wasn't really serious to me, so it didn't really affect me until I went through the process of chemo, losing my hair and stuff, and having to explain it to my daughter, who was the oldest, that, you know, I have to take medicine and my hair is going to go away, but I promise I'm going to be fine. You know, continuing to smile for them. It was the second and third diagnosis that really hit me hard, and I kind of just wanted to give up on everything. But them coming in my room and checking on me and asking me, well, why do I have to keep going to doctors? I have to smile and I have to let them know that I'm still here. Well, thank you for sharing your story because I think it's so important. And I think, it, Nia, to your point, we, it's important to show it, that it doesn't matter if you're 20s, 30s, mm -hmm. 40s, what your background, mm -hmm. where you're from. And mm -hmm. sometimes not everyone, like they don't always, voices aren't always heard Correct. sometimes or, you know, people like, oh, it's fine. You're young. Don't yep. worry about that yep. thing. Mm -hmm. You had a big event this weekend. Great turnout. Yes. Miss Patty Jackson, love her, was yes. there. Yes. Wonderful. Yes. Um, tell us about that event because you're trying to raise money right now yes. as well. Yes, yes. Um, so it was at the Philadelphia Country Club. We had a great event. Over 100 people came. Um, it was uh, produced by Daydream Creative Studios here in Ardmore, PA. Um, and we just had a beautiful, beautiful time just bringing awareness to Janique Rivera, Brenda Durantes, who was diagnosed in her 30s. Her interview was in Spanish. Um, and Lynn Mitchell, who is Caucasian and diagnosed in her 40s. So we really wanted to get the word out there that, like you said, it doesn't matter what you look like, how mm -hmm. old you are. You know, in this world now, I think everything is so crazy and divisive. We're, we're 
all the same and we all can unfortunately get breast cancer. Men, women, black, white, Asian, you know, if you make $2 or $100. So where can people donate if they want? Because we all want to help yes, out yes, for this yes. right now during this important Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So um, go to the Eventbrite and then type in a letter to my sisters, a breast cancer documentary for young women. I know that's a lot. And then mm -hmm. um, when you donate the proceeds, go to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. All the proceeds go to there. Ladies, mm -hmm. thank you for coming in, for sharing your stories and bringing this important story for so many people. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you for